Hey, how's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Tuesday start of the work week. Some had a three-day weekend out here. Kind of nice while it lasted. About 10.37 a.m. California time, May 28th, 2024. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D globe. Looks like uh, some movement down into the South America area. I just seen a green flag down here also. Got a 1.9 coming into the area of Southern California. Uh, that did show up here on the seismograph stations down in the Anza station there. So it uh, looks like a little bit of activity stirring up in Southern California here today. We'll get to that in just a little bit. Want to cover space weather activity first where we're watching former Sunspot 3664. Come into a little bit better perspective of a view out here off the southeastern limb. Still quite complex, not as complex as what it was when it was last out here on the earth facing side of the sun but still throwing out x flares as it did two nights ago with that x 2.9 got to keep an eye on it because we are looking at an elevated threat here uh far as the solar flare threat goes and of course x flare being the highest flaring problem uh, possibilities uh, at 30 percent chance here a pretty decent 60% chance for an M flare and C flare around 99% chance or so. Uh, so things are getting quite elevated. And uh, let's check out the UV ray here. Uh, it is currently flaring here from the sunspot. I guess we better call it by its, a, by its new name, right? It's been newly assigned 3697. So 3697 here uh, is currently flaring with a little bit of C flare activity, although it does have a decent chance of producing more X flares. Uh, if you look at the probability details out here, uh, let's see, 3691 and 3697 there. Those two giant sunspots harbor the most potential there of seeing some X flare activity with, of course, 3697 being the highest. So there's your overall threat, 30% chance for X flare activity. Uh, so not only do we have 3697 here, but also 3695 up here on the northeastern quadrant of the sun. That's looking quite complex within this portion of the core. Uh, it does look like it is increasing in complexity over the last couple days. So we'll continue to monitor this sunspot as it does uh, harbor potential for some X-flare activity. And also in the position here, uh, just about ready to be earth-directed in terms of any bullseye shots that uh, blast off from here. But uh, these two main sh uh, two main sunspots here we'll definitely keep an eye on over the coming days. No major wars in the forecast for now. Uh, and as you can see, there's not a whole lot there in the 30-minute aurora forecast. All right, earthquake activity. There's Southern California lighting up slightly out here. does look like uh, we got a little bit of swarming going on here. Uh, now, this area here is south of the border from yesterday, but it does look like we've seen another four-pointer out here in this area. Now, I know it might seem a ways away from Southern California, but realistically, geo uh, geologically speaking, uh, this is just a small distance in terms of plate boundaries and fault systems out here. So we are seeing some elevated activity in Southern California as well. Um pretty much on a broad scale uh, from Ontario up here 2.6 near Fon uh, Fontana and as you can see on the map here numerous other twos and smaller quakes scattered out and about the area today so keep an eye on the Southern California region it is showing some uh, elevated activity out here in general across this region today uh, 2.5 map and above well that pretty much squashes all the microquakes but uh, uh, you know, technically, these are all earthquakes and the sequence of quakes that are going on out here as well. So keep an eye on SoCal, Southern California area, up in the Sierra Nevada mountains. Looks like a 2.6 coming in near the An Antelope Valley up here on the uh, border, California-Nevada border. And Northern California, though, pretty quiet. Most of the movement today looks like it is centered around this area, this little crunch zone right here around the this area of the plate between the North American and the Pacific plate. Uh, some movement up here across Mount St. Helens. Handful of smaller quakes up there at the summit area. Um, looks like some of that from yesterday, some from today. So let's go check out the volcano page here. 
from the USGS where all the volcanoes, monitored ones, are pretty much calm except for the Great Sitkin Volcano which has been in kind of a unrest state for a little while. Uh, but as you can see here across the west coast, all volcanoes there um, green and normal for now. As we look at the Mount St. Helens page here, we'll check out some seismograph stations, see if we can spot some of that earthquake activity. Uh, it does look like it's occurring right up here at the crater area. There's a couple of those earthquakes here. They're well defined. Uh, some of these other readings, it's hard to tell what those are. Uh, but there's definitely a handful of earthquakes here at the Mount St. Helens station there at the summit. Uh, as far as gas emissions go, looks like, uh, wow, looks like these are all offline. Let me see, we got another station up there monitoring gas. It doesn't look like it. Huh. All right, well, we'll have to check back on that. Hopefully they get this, uh, that fixed. I don't know when it went offline. I used to be able to access the data here, but it doesn't look like it right now. Alrighty, so keep an eye on that. Obviously a little bit of earthquake activity. Same for Mount Rainier up here. Really not as much though as Mount St. Helens. Just a little scattered earthquake activity out here. And uh, this kind of looks like it's just stress related against the Cascades. But uh, we'll definitely watch that. Yellowstone National Park over here. Only uh, one little lonesome earthquake. So let's just see what we have. Um, looks like maybe right in here. See, see this one? A little small earthquake there. That did show up on the Holmes Hill Station as well. This other noise out here could be wind. Could be other environmental factors at play here. But... And this is not ground motion. This is just a defunctionable um, seismograph station out here that no one's actually fixed yet. All right, back to earthquake activity out here. Texas, Oklahoma. Um, yeah, goodness, these guys are just seeing the swarm of activity out here in these oil fields. A lot of this from yesterday, but uh, it does look like we've seen some further activity this morning with a 4.1 in that swarming area of Texas. Uh, Got to watch the new Madrid seismic zone. I mentioned that last night. Doesn't look like anything stirred up here since, but uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on it. A lot of time, a lot of times here when we see that migration of pressure off of the Texas area, obviously that's a ways away from the plate boundary, but uh, kind of around the North American Craton area, uh, we'll see that pressure kind of transpire across it and move towards the new madrid and potentially up here around the eastern coast uh, there was a little earthquake out here last night 1.4 but we'll watch for some further earthquake activity about new madrid zone eastward uh, with this ongoing activity there at the oil fields in texas that's just quite a bit of stress being out there in that region uh, big island of hawaii quite quiet as far as the uh, volcano goes uh, let's double check, see what's going on out there at the Kilauea Volcano today. <clears throat> Which still sits at a yellow and advisory. The latest update was put out yesterday. Uh, deformation data here shows that we're starting to climb back up here as expected. The overall trend here is shown uh, an in incline here, a inflation event followed by a day and a half, maybe two days of stationary or deflationary activity. Looks like we're coming back up here now. And we should continue to peak above the previous level. And, of course, this here is the highest level it's been in terms of inflation there at the summit since 2018. So anything could happen at any time in terms of a magma intrusion somewhere or potential eruption there at the surface. We'll definitely continue to keep an eye on that because it's getting up there. Uh, did see some deeper activity once again here into the Tonga Trench. Working its way down, it looks like, here across the Kermadec Trench area. Over the past couple days, most of the movement has been up here. And some large-scale activity as well. Let me pull up the last week. Seen a lot of deep activity. Surface adjustment going on following all this deep activity with that 6.6 .6 
and uh, a handful of earthquakes at the surface levels right here at the subduction zone interface level itself. That newer activity, a little concerning because this is deeper movement activity as well, getting some surface adjustment in between the deeper activity. So watch this region up here, uh, roughly pretty much Kermadec Trench southward. Uh, maybe this area right here as well could be seeing some further movement uh, following this renewed deeper activity that's migrating its way southward today. Across this area of the world, got uh, one little earthquake up here, 5.9 off the coast of uh, northern Sumatra. That uh, pretty close to a six pointer, but not quite, 5.9. Latest quake shows 113 kilometer deep, 4.6 here in the Philippines into the Philippine Trench. Let's see what we got here. Seven days of activity. Yeah, there was a handful of smaller quakes in this area as well throughout the week. Not a whole lot up here across the Andaman Sea, but we'll continue to watch that. It does look like there's some migration going on northward across that area. Uh, Taiwan. This is the last week or so. Really not a whole lot. I mean, compared to what we had seen last month when we had that decent earthquake swarm up here, things are just kind of kind of watching that still. A little suspicious there how all that earthquake activity came up and about and then just disappeared. 4.4 into the Japan Trench here. About 47 kilometers deep for that quake this morning. The Kuro Kamchaka Trench continues to build up steam but for now remains quiet. We got another earthquake there in SoCal. It looks like Southern California, a green flag hiding out there. South America region looks like uh, mainly twos and threes. A little four pointer up here. Uh, surface adjustment quake taking place. Looks like it's around the Peru area. Nothing showing up here on the USGS map, but uh, it's there. Caribbean plate in general looks fairly quiet aside from the typical swarming going on here across the Puerto Rico area this region's always swarming and having earthquakes We've got the Mariotos trough here subduction zone Puerto Rico trench always getting squeezed and pushed around here but for now no major quake activity out in the Atlantic Ocean let's see what we got here I want to check out Iceland see what's going on up there haven't even looked at this map yet today Ooh, goodness past 12 hours See, this is increasing. Let me check out the live from Iceland site here real quick. <clears throat> See what's going on here. A little cloudy out there. Views are obscured there. It doesn't look like too much uh, uh, activity. It doesn't look like any visual uh, eruption there at the surface but we're definitely getting a lot of earthquake activity out here in the last 12 hours just north here of Grindavik and the craters area obviously this region is quite elevated in terms of inflation out here so let's go check out the Icelandic Met Office this is a source for information doesn't look like they've updated their page yet so I think they're just kind of waiting this is from the 24th and today's the 28th so um, just obviously it's still I, I wouldn't doubt it if we're beyond that level right now this is the highest previous inflation level just leading up to the eruption earlier uh, well late last year back in uh, November this is the current inflation rate We've been going up and up and up without any eruption. Of course, we've been having, uh, you know, a slow, long-lived eruption there. Um, it's been, I think it's been a month now since it stopped. But prior to that, we were looking at, um, you know, one crater showing continuous eruption and fountaining for quite a while. But even during so, we we're still looking at elevated inflation continuing to rise underneath this area. Uh, and I think we're matched. I think we're past that now. So we're probably up around 20 million cubic meters of magma into the area now, which is just crazy. Just a matter of time, I feel, before things get uh, really going here across the area. And the key to watch this, of course, is going to be the earthquake activity. 
Uh, I'm not seeing anything that would tell me right now that we're going to see eruptive activity take place. But literally probably about 20 minutes or half an hour prior or later following the, the earthquake activity, we would see erupt, uh, eruptive fissure activity take place following a swarm of quakes. But this right here, I don't see that being our, our signal to look for. But no doubt this area is highly strained, highly stressed. And uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on it for sure. Just a matter of time. Ooh, a couple of earthquakes here just off the Sa uh, San Andreas Fault here. 1.2. Definitely keep an eye on Southern California. I've been, you know, we've been having swarms of quakes out here recently. And it looks like that's continuing into today. Uh, severe weather out here across the states. Uh, seen Dallas, Texas area had quite a bit of... Uh, wind and hail recently out there uh, it's just been a crazy season uh it looks like they added a five percent chance for tornado activity out here today mainly in western texas uh midland there's also a two percent zone across the majority here of texas as well kind of looks like a uh a car seat in a way but uh aside from that we've got some heavy duty wind with a heart shape here these areas in the dash zone could see uh, wind gusts over 65 knots or greater in 25 miles of a point. Big time hail out there expected as well. And uh, tomorrow, as we look into the day on Wednesday, uh, a little slight risk up there, mainly in the uh, it's kind of an odd area. Northern Plains, eastern Colorado, with uh, mainly wind and hail threats out here. Uh, either way, it's... Um, it's it's going to go away here eventually. I was looking at these numerical models. And uh, looks like as we get into the first week of June or so, things could be potentially stabilizing. Let's see here if we've got any different patterns. Yeah, it does look like after the first few days of June, things kind of take a little different approach. Obviously, there's going to be thunderstorm activity, but I'm really not seeing anything that would set up a significant severe weather event. Looks like we might have some rain out here in California. I don't know. It's a little weird. Thunderstorms out there. Let's see here. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's... Looks like it'll be wet. So high pressure building in for the first week of June across the West Coast and really up here across the Northern Plains. Things are going to be cooking out there. Looks like that high pressure is going to remain there for a little while. So that should stabilize some of the severe weather that's been taking place out here recently. All right, what else we got here, folks? Uh, Mediterranean 3.0 coming in here. Looks like just Western Turkey. No major swarming going on out here. Again, the Atlantic Ocean pretty quiet. Let's see what we got. Seismograph stations pretty quiet for now. A little bit of spiky activity there on Barrett. But also have an ANZA station here as well. So these two are somewhat close in proximity there to the Southern California earthquake activity. So this one would be the one to watch as well as this Barrett station up there as well. But uh, aside from that, uh, we'll keep our eyes there on that sunspot and see uh, if we get any more X flares. The visible disc, let me see here. This one's kind of a little spotty. You can definitely tell the sunspot has degraded some, uh, but they, they can always kick back up. But 3691 looking uh, fairly promising there. Looks like we're getting a couple different dynamic magnetic cores here. All right. Have a wonderful Tuesday, folks. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on. Live stream is up and running. Uh, I think everything is as it should be. And uh, we'll keep an eye on things here. Have a, a good day. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later. Stay safe.